Cassettes is because you're a baby. You probably still have your umbilical cord tied around your navel. Your breast smile probably smells like titties and Similac. And you probably have no clue about good music. These are cassettes. You know what's funny? My first cassette I bought, let me tell you, I wasn't allowed to listen to rap when I was younger. My first cassette I bought, I bought two cassettes from Traders Village. They probably was bootlegs. I'm not gonna say yay or nay to that, but two tapes I bought was Master P Ice Cream Man and Tila Peace of Mind. And I remember listening to both of them like, cassettes were an age where you could actually listen to the radio and record the radio. The radio used to play music that you wanted to record. Remember when the new bone came on the radio and you had to record? Had to get it. You had to record had to it right it. there so you had it to able to play for your people just in case they haven't heard the new bone yet. And then you felt you put tissue on the top. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that tissue in there so I can erase, bro. Shoot. You get your tape pop, you get the fingernail polish, put it back man, together. Go make it work. Man, I say we were architects of cassette tapes. Outcast, man. He's pronounced right? outcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, ATL is man comic book man the style was just straight from the future man this is when Andre 3000 started really like straying away from his you know ego or, or his style as you know the pimp or the player and everything he started going off into 3000 um, one of my favorite songs ever a life 13th floor growing old oh my god I love that song like it's the best song like ever you know what I'm saying this Outkast CD, it means like everything to me because it's a true classic because no matter what, it could be 2,000 years from now, this song on this album will still go hard and you can play it all the way through without having to skip one time. Outkast, pronounce Outkast, y'all know. Outkast, pronounce Outkast. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, this is the first this is the first time I ever freestyled on the tape, you know what I'm saying? Funky Ride, man, where is it? Funky Ride, right there. Written by Organized Noise, produced by Organized Noise. You know what I'm saying? On the Southern playlist, I went to this guy's house. He just happened to be from Atlanta. Whatever, they don't even matter. What happened was he played this, we was drinking, we was smoking. I freestyled my first freestyle, we recorded it, it was classic. It was to this album, to this song. This song made me want to rap. This album made me want to rap. I wanted to rap after we played with this. And this was just. That was when they honed it in. Man, bro. I remember when I remember when I was at, I just happened to be at his crib, you know what I'm saying? Actually, we was at his baby mama house. Baby mama yeah, we was at his baby mama house. Fred came in he here called like, me. Yeah, he like, called me, he said, I got the album. Because it's just when you saw him at Redbird Mall. Re yeah, yeah, he Redbird went to Redbird Mall. Mall and saw yeah. him up there, and he went and got the album. He said, go to her house and wait for me, because I'm coming through with it. He came through with this, and we sat, and we played this album probably like, thir oh, man. We played it so many times, bro, that it was amazing, bro. The tape pop. Like, I mean, we played the hell out of this, bro. But this was, this was...
was on the 70 so strong, man. You know what I'm saying? I was on the 70 so strong because my granny used to jam the 70s, you know what I'm saying, all the time. And I mean, that's just, it's like, I love rap, and then I love 70 soul, you know what I'm saying? I know it seems like there's a big gap between that, but that's, hey, that's just me, that's how it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me see what they, they got all the mazes. Silky soul. Let's see. No, not Mace, nigga. Mace uh, with a Z. I knew it. <laughs> he ain't no nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? He don't know. Jay-Z, man. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, this is not the Jay-Z album I was looking for. This is not the Jay-Z album I was looking for. Granted, the Blueprint was an amazing album. But the Blueprint wasn't the album I was looking for Hard Knock Life, and I couldn't find Hard Knock Life and didn't have it on vinyl. But I'm going to just hold up the Blueprint and talk about Hard Knock Life. Hard Knock Life was when Jay-Z came to the South. Jay-Z didn't come to the South with uh, Reasonable Doubt or In My Lifetime, Volume 1. Jay-Z came to the South, Volume 2, Hard Knock Life. And he came to the South where everybody was like, this kid can rap. Oh, what happened? I broke something. It don't matter. Yeah. Anyway. What happened was, I was listening yeah. to this Jay-Z yeah. album, and I remember thinking to my head, like, nobody raps better than this guy. And I, I guess I wasn't the only one, because T.I. says you need to track from Jesus and Jay-Z. So, I mean, it got to a point where Jay-Z was literally the standard of spitting. Like, you wasn't a rapper if you wasn't spitting like Jay-Z. Jay-Z came through and shifted the way people rap, the way people present they raps, you know what I'm saying? The delivery of they raps. It became, like, if you wasn't rapping like Jay-Z, you weren't even a good rapper. It got to a point where this was it, man. And granted, you know, the blueprint was the blueprint, and, you know, it's still classic. Jay-Z had many classics, but, you know, Jay-Z, hero, changed my life, changed me as a rapper, man. Changed me as a musician. Right here's Tech 9 Tech 9 this is just one of his great albums. One thing I can tell you about Take Nine is this young man is still independent. So all the Lamborghinis, all the Ferraris, all the houses, all the everything he buy, he buy himself. This man is independent. This right here is something else. Take Nine, man. Say, Fire, Water, Earth, man. I swear to God, man. Take Nine. Like here in Texas, man, like a lot of boys don't understand, like around here we respect the hustle. You don't really have to be, you know what I'm saying, with a major label to make good music and make good hits. That's why right here at Tech 9 I'm going to hit you up with the all-time favorite. I believe, if you haven't heard of this young man, kill yourself, probably with a butter knife, something that'll be painful. <laughs> this right here is Tupac, all eyes on me. This was like fresh out of jail when he like really just lost his mind, man. He, did, he took like the thug like to a whole new level. It's like maybe 85 rappers out now today that are like off of this protege. I mean, back-to-back -back hits, Shug made a lot of money, Pop made a lot of money. You know, this was pretty much almost towards the end of the Death Row Dynasty, man, because everything, people started like leaving after Pop died, man. But this right here was a big change in hip hop because after this, the music started changing on the radio too. They was getting tired of rappers dying. So this right here was like when the streets bubbled over to the point that the powers that be are to Jewish people that run the record label, they started chilling out with the thug rap. That's why all the rappers and stuff dance are happy now because they don't want this kind of stuff to happen no more. So Tupac changed the game, kind of like Allen Iverson changed the dress code <laughs> in the NBA. Tupac, all eyes on me. Bang. All right, so I moved to Texas. I'm from Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an outsider pretty much. 
this was as Texas as you could get at the time. What year was this? This is 93, 94. 94, right? It jumped off with the return of the trill ass niggas, bro. And I'm talking about it start this album started off so instant. You put the CD in and all of a sudden you hear it all started with a boom. And you hear the Pepsi organs, you hear Pepsi wrecking, you got it all happening, right? It was UGK in your face. Nothing was it nothing was out of bounds. It was the return of the trill ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? And for us to be trilogy, you know what I'm saying? You have to have the trill in you. You know what I'm talking about? And I, I soaked up a lot of you know, I could actually go back and be like hard to swallow was in there, you know what I'm saying? Back when he had to tell you something good. Like the whole section was just trill the shit, man. But this album right here was the one, bro. This was the one that I actually used to bang. I would get this right now and bang it right now and everybody on the block would be like, damn nigga, where you get that out with? Cause this was that groundbreaking thing, man. UGK, man, super time. What's going on? It's your boy R.O.D. AKA D. Bill. Scarface Fix. It's like the dopest album ever made in life. This is my favorite album. Came out of uh, 2001, Five Mics, Scarface Down South Houston, you know what I'm saying? The thing I like about this album is it got some of everything in it. You got, you got your, you got your gangster rap, you got your spiritual rap, you got your survival rap, you got your hustle rap. I mean, from beginning to end, you can play the whole thing. Like, when I rolled up and met up with y'all today, this is what I was listening to. It came out in 2001. I'm letting it play all the way through. I don't know what you're next, but hold on. Scarface to fix. If you haven't heard it. You're missing out on the treasure. You that's heard all D signing off. You heard yeah, that's the only one I found. So, out of this whole record store. Wow, Hold on, on. Let's, 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 pan, let's, let's pan around. Hey, little mama lip gloss, man. Little mama lip gloss. Ah, we're in the record store. We living it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we're kind of cushy, too. But yeah, man, we uh we got the fix, you know what I'm saying? He did his three, man. You know what I'm saying? What was that? Uh, Jay Z. Jay Z, Andre Three, Bun B, man. You can't yeah, beat yeah, those yeah. guys, man. Yeah, man. I went with Tech Nine. Had to go with Outkast. Who doesn't? And he stole mine. I, I told you this. And hold on, I, I still got one more left. And I had to go with Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't go with that? You know, and that was Rest my Recipe Tupac, you yeah, stole yeah. my Outkast album. And, and on Tiana's default, is my favorite. I was also looking for 8 Ball and MJG in our lifetime, but I couldn't find that. But, yeah. And I was, I was looking, I was trying to, you know what I'm saying, dig deep, you know what I'm saying, because I'm, cause I'm kind of old school when it comes to it. I like a lot of 70 songs, you know what I'm saying, some albums I know through and through, I, yeah, I couldn't find them, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, I chose Scarface and Fix for my rap oh, album. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I I love I love Marvin Gaye. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Isley Brothers. You know what I'm saying? I listen to things like that. Uh, my grandfather used to jam it when I was when I was younger. That's just what I grew up on. Like I know the whole songs, the whole albums type shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was looking for. But you see, it's still hot because they ain't got it. It's gone already. Yeah. Somebody didn't pick that up. Feel me? I was looking for the Superfly uh, I was soundtrack. Looking for Superfly they ain't too. had a first <laughs> Superfly. So yeah. it's like, man, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you want that everybody wants. You know what I'm saying? You can't just, you yeah. can't just grab. I tell you what, man, you, you gave us three, bro. It ain't a whole, it ain't a whole lot we can do with three. Yeah. Real talk, because as musicians, bro, we listen to so much. Bro, I could have gotten this rock, and niggas wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about. I could have went to some, some Lincoln Park, some Incubus, a whole bunch of shit. I could have went some Nine Inch Nails, some fucking, some fucking Stone Temple Pilots, and niggas wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about. So I just gave the three that I know shaped my, shaped my flow. For sure, you know what I'm saying? Those three did shape my flow. But as for shape my musical taste, man, my musical taste, you'd have to start over there in the Christmas and then go your ass all the way over to the soundtracks, man. And maybe you might just get a, a small inkling of what I listen to. Yeah. Marilyn Manson, you know what I'm talking about? I like Marilyn Manson. No, it's not. You know, like, no. See, I like Marilyn Manson. I thought Marilyn Manson was the funniest guy on earth, but he put on the, the, the woman mannequin pussy suit. I was like, this guy's fucking crazy. They talk about, yeah, he took his ribs out to suck his own dick. It's like, man, this guy's fucking crazy. I liked it, though. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't like, ew, gross. I was like, that guy's rocking. 
I mean, he's a rock star, man. What you expect, bro? You know, that's how. Hey, I'm trying to give you the world and you trying to give it back. What they do that at? Baby, 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 tell me. What did I ever lose to cause you to go away? Sit it low, 